Democratic debate last night. I did not. My Wi-Fi was down, so I couldn't really watch it over the cell network, and it's not very good down in this part of the world, so I wasn't going to watch it anyways. I was going to watch the President Trump, uh, you know, rally in Arizona, but then again, I'm like, well, it's pretty much all the same now. Unless you're there, it's something different, but I figured, nah, I'll just go to bed at 8 o'clock until I uh, find out, you know, all the people who reacted to the Democratic debate last night. And it was the usual standard fare. Um, Bloomberg got his butt handed to him by pretty much every socialist on that stage. And then Bloomberg called out <laughs> Bernie Sanders to be a communist. He was like, how dare you? <laughs> I'm not a, so a communist. I'm a socialist. I'm like, oh, well, what's the difference? <laughs> not much. The end result is communism. Socialism is just the stage. But... Uh, this is from the Hill. This is what a broker convention is a pretty interesting uh, thing that if they don't, if they can't figure out who won by way of votes in the uh, primaries, they have to go to the convention to figure out who won and they have to vote there. Hence the word uh, brokered convention. Uh, it says former skeptics now warning of brokered convention nightmare for Democrats. And there's a lot of people out there saying last night who won the debate was obviously Donald Trump. So let me uh, drink some of that kind of huh? Yeah. Democrats, who were initially skeptical of the prospects of a brokered convention, now see it as a likelier scenario with eight candidates still battling it out for the nomination. I think about this time, there was, in 2016 for the uh, Republicans, there was four, three or four left. Now there's still eight. As in Nevada caucuses approach on Saturday, the strategists say it may be coming clear none of the Democratic candidates are likely to win the majority of the delegates before the convention in July. Yay! But lately, particularly with the Democratic Party requiring a proportional allocation of delegates, it's definitely seeming like it, it could happen. Yeah, they I think they changed it to where um, it's if you win 50%, you get half the delegates, you win 30%, you get 30% of the delegates, etc., etc., etc. So right now, the I think Buttigieg is still up by one, even though he lost technically Iowa and lost uh, New Hampshire by a smidge. Uh, one Democrat who worked with two campaigns for former President Obama called the broker convention the biggest nightmare of the Democrats can imagine. If you want to see a complete poop show, tune into the broker convention. Oh yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. See, I'm a kind of type of guy that likes chaos. It's like much of like ah, you know, not angry chaos but sort of like your chicken with the head cut off kind of run around not not know what to do etc etc uh adam <clears throat> park homenko who worked for the former secretary of state hillary clinton 2016 campaign said this is currently heading for a convention fight at this rate the number of candidates scoring in double digits that are splitting delegates continue to do so with super tuesday and beyond it's just math unless all of a sudden a number of candidates drop out which they're not you see, what's interesting about someone like Klobuchar, she should have dropped out a long time ago, but she sort of like just hung around. She was like the fifth wheel, just kind of hung around a little bit, and all of a sudden, she's in there still. Former Senator Bernie Sanders and former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Buttigieg, Buttigieg, whatever, raised $34 million and $24 million, respectively, in the fourth quarter of 2019. Uh, Klobuchar has benefited from fundraising moments since the third-place finish in New Hampshire. Even candidates who finished up behind the top three, Warren and Joe Biden, have ranked, raked in more than $20 million each. Where do, they, where do these socialists get all this money? Mayor Bloomberg, who has been ascending in the recent polls, has shown no signs of pulling back on spending with his self-funding campaign. By the way, he spent, I want to say $140 million or more, I think. Uh, it's... Another complicating factor is a calendar of nominating contests. The four early voting states, Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina, amount to for just 6% of the overall delegates needed to win an outright nomination. More than 50% of the delegates come in March contests when states like California and Texas are up for grabs. The, the longer we go without a dominant front runner, the greater the likelihood of a broker convention, said Democratic strategist Joel Payne, who served as an aide to Clinton in 2016. Payne said if the contests are split between three or four candidates, including Bloomberg, the likelihood goes up exponentially. See, I can say exponentially, but I can't say likelihood. What's wrong with my brain? Oh, excuse me. He added that a numbers game in the broker convention scenario would work against Sanders in the long run. I kind of agree on that. 
Because there's a lot of people out there, a lot of good-hearted Democrats, if there are some, that don't take kindly to communism or socialism, and they don't want to put somebody up there that will lose against Donald Trump. You put Sanders up, he will lose against him. No doubt. Uh, says Cody and Harris, if Bernie or even Warren on one side and three or four moderates on the other side, all the delegates, the odds are the moderates would have enough delegates to team up and hold off Sanders' nomination. I was listening to uh, Glenn Beck today. He was talking about, um, or was, it, was it yesterday or something like that? They were talking, I think it was some college uh, poll that came out. They said, uh, they asked if conservatives, would you be friends with, uh, you know, the liberals or Democrats? Like 93% said they would. And then, Democrats or liberals said uh, like 20% said they would be friends with the opposite political party. 80% said they wouldn't be. So that what does that tell you? But coming come with this though, with the moderates, I just don't think there's enough of them still out there, barely. Because we get the fringes right now who are voting for or who want people like Sanders and Buttigieg and uh, Klobuchar, Warren, Biden. God, how many is there? There's, that's right. Gabbard's still out there, but so I, you would hope that these people would try to vote for somebody who would think they would get elected. But again, this is, you got to understand who we're talking about. We're talking about liberals. They're not always, dare I say, they're not always thinking with their head. They're always thinking with their heart and emotional. So who knows what's going to happen? In 2016, Sanders battled Clinton to the very end of the primary and vowed to take the fight to the convention. It's virtually impossible for Hillary Clinton to reach the majority of the convention delegates by June 14th, which is the last day of primary. And they also got those stupid super delegates too. Oh, liberals, you never learn. Uh, says, but in MSCBC interview last week, Sanders said it would be a very divisive moment for the party if the candidate with the most delegates or plurality, plurality, God dang, doesn't get the nomination. As a Democratic debate in Las Vegas on Wednesday night, NBC's Chuck Todd or, or like Laura Shilomov say, Chuck, F. Chuck Todd, asked the, Chuck, after asked the six candidates on stage if the contender with the most delegates heading into the convention would win the nomination, even if not the majority. Five candidates replied on the process should work its way out, meaning the primary should go to the convention where the superdelegates would have a chance to vote on the second ballot. And there we go. A second, a second more, more important vote, if you will, is the stupid Democrat superdelegates out there who are a bunch of elites, if you will, that are given votes to like, so all the people, the people who vote are too stupid to know the nuances of the election and democracy. So we need to vote and make sure we fix it. Yeah, that's what you want. But if Sanders opposed that idea, I think it will be all the people should prevail. Yes, the person with the most votes should become the nominee. A brokered convention would pose a risk to the party unity heading into the general election. This is coming from a guy that who was an independent between the four years, and then becomes a Democrat, socialist, to get the nomination, and then fails, and then goes back to becoming an independent. What a wishy-washy piece of crap. I'm looking at you, Michael Bloomberg. Wink, wink. The last time a political party came this close was a broker convention in 1976, and GOP split into two sides, one for Ford and one for Ronald Reagan. I guess we know which one they should have taken. But the tension eased by the summer heading to the convention. In general, pundits always like to predict brokered situation, but the primaries and caucuses would have worked their magic by nomination time in the post 1960s era. George McGovern. Uh, let's see. To win the party nomination, a candidate needs to secure a majority of pledged delegates. 1991. But the, because of the new rule implemented by the Democratic National Committee, super delegates. Reaching that number could be challenging for White House hopefuls. The rule states that superdelegates, including Democratic leaders and lawmakers, could vote on the first ballot at the convention. Oh, crap. Helping to boost candidates who had a plurality of delegates. But because of those new rules, those delegates are not eligible to vote until the second round. Which is interesting because these superdelegates get to vote in their prospective states. But then they get to vote again. So they get two votes for one person. That sounds pretty fair, doesn't it? Actually, it's not. I'm being facetious. A convention fight, quote in here, would be tough on Democrats, especially with new rules diminishing the power of the superdelegates because it would add to the perception of chaos and heighten already deep tensions within the party right before the general campaign. You mean the deep tension between the, the fringe far left, the socialist, 
and the middle of the road moderates who just want to, you know, vote for somebody they, they may hopefully be Donald Trump. But the way they're going here, it doesn't look like that. The party could still get over it because antipathy to Trump is so high. But this is this would not be the process the Demos Democrats were hoping for in 2020. That's correct. The more chaos, the more animosity during this during, during this convention in uh, Milwaukee will only boost Donald Trump's bottom line. Essentially, there's people out there that probably don't want to vote for Donald Trump, but they're going. You know what? These people don't want to know what they're talking about. I'm not going to vote for a socialist. Okay, I'm not going to vote for a socialist. I'm not going to vote for some rich billionaire, you know, I don't like Trump, but the economy's good. You know, there's no missiles coming out of the sky. Everything seems fine. So why change essentially the youth or the, the saying, why change horses in the middle of the river? You would. And closing out here with how crazy the cycle has been. It wouldn't be surprised if another crazy plot twist is still to come. I agree. The Democrats don't deserve this. And like, like I said in the beginning, I enjoy the chaos. And I hope, I hope to God there is more chaos. Not violence, just your sort of general chaos of like a chicken with the head cut off running around, bouncing into stuff, not knowing what's going on, you know. Nothing like violence. Not like, uh, I think it was in the, the 60s when uh, Jordan McGovern, they had like with Chicago riots. That wasn't good. We don't need that. Do not need that. Oh, oh, no.